Hey, what is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today we're taking a look at another X-Men omnibus, and this is the X-Men by Jonathan Hickman omnibus, so I'm very excited to get into this one. So without further ado, let's take a look at the book. And here is the cover of the book. It looks a little different from normal omnibuses with, you know, the artwork sort of covered by the logo and the little omnibus symbol on the top right there, but I had to go with the Emma Frost in Jean Grey cover because I love Emma Frost so much. At first glance, the spine of the book also looks weird and like it's got tiny font, but if you put it next to House of X, Powers of X, and then you put uh, X of Swords after it, it looks pretty neat and clean. It matches up with those books. And here is the back of the book. You know, simple red, simple descriptions, and we've got some Krakoan, the language of Krakoa, on here. All right, guys, and let's actually open up the book, but I do want to preface and say that my book has some damage to it. I This was one of the first times I actually ordered from Organic Price Books, and I opened the book. It was shrink-wrapped, and there was, like, this box cutter-looking damage to some of the initial pages, and I I think that's from the printer actually and no slight to organic price books they're actually making it right they're sending me a replacement copy and i'm going to send this one back so a bit of a hassle but they're at least sending me the replacement copy but anyway here's what this book collects x-men 1 through 11 and then x-men 16 through 21 giant size x-men gene gray and emma frost giant size x-men nightcrawler giant size x-men magneto giant size x-men phantom x and giant size x-men storm and there's also material from incoming one so what is this book well this is us officially diving into the brand new era of x-men that was so radically introduced to us in hickman's house of x powers of x and i'll say i don't think this omnibus would be the absolute worst place to start reading x-men but you really should read house of x powers of x first which is fairly quick and it's a fantastic read anyway, but that sort of lays the groundwork for all of this. The mutants have banded together, they've created a whole new island nation with a whole new ideology to it this time, so it's going to be different, and they've also basically defeated death. And this is their era to thrive in, and I truly do love this era. It feels like such a great time to be an X-Men fan. The X-Men will never be the same because of this run, and that's for sure, and I don't think you can truly say that about too many comic book runs with some of these characters that have been around for decades, but you can definitely say it with this one. There are some really fantastic issues in here with some of the best character moments we've seen in a long time. Like right off the bat, there's a moment where Charles Xavier, Magneto, and Apocalypse, who are all now banded together, go to this economic forum and they basically just flex their power to the human nations in a really satisfying way. And they're all like fitted up in suits, they're eating steak, and Magneto and Apocalypse really just steal the show here. Plus, come on, who doesn't want to see Apocalypse in a suit? We also get the start of this incredible story between Destiny and Mystique that sets up a later event called Inferno, but basically Mystique wants her wife Destiny to be resurrected, because she's currently dead at the time, and Charles and Magneto just keep dangling in front of her, but they refuse to do it every time, and there is a specific reason they're doing that that you can find out in here. Um, although they didn't have to be so cruel about it. They're a little cruel about the way they dangle it in front of Mystique. But anyway, this stuff was instantly iconic. We also get to learn about the Crucible in here, which is basically an arena fighting pit. And it connects with the resurrection protocols. And it's a way for mutants who were depowered to get their powers back, basically. But the intro to it is just really powerful and kind of just plain awesome. And it's another Apocalypse highlight moment. Apocalypse is one of these characters that in this era just really, really shines and Hickman does a really good job with him during the Krakoa time. Another super important thing that is set up in this book is the Arako Island, which is basically a companion island to Krakoa. They were together and they split it sometime. There's a whole history of it in here, but basically it's an entire other island that is harboring all these other types of mutants. And what's really exciting about those mutants is that the creators basically just went wild with the designs because a lot of them are not really human conforming mutants. They're, they look more interesting than that and they have really unique power sets as well and they're super powerful they're kind of like this warring race and this is also setting up another event that's coming forward here um, it comes right after this omnibus actually which is the x of swords event which i've done a video on that oversized hardcover before if you want to hear some brief thoughts on that storyline as well the volt storyline in here is also one that i found to be pretty touching and basically that is wolverine laura kinney uh sink and darwin they all go into the vault because you know the council uh, on krakoa deems that they're the most fit to do it because of their power set and the way that they can synergize off each other which is also just a really cool thing about this area 
here, by the way, all the synergies, I mean, that's how we got resurrection. There are five mutants who synergize together and can bring people back to life or back from the dead or duplicate them or however you want to say it. But this team of three goes into the vault and basically they end up being in there for a long time and there's a lot that happens in that and I'll let you explore that for yourself. But as I said, I found it very heartwarming and very touching and the resolution of it is a little bittersweet. I also just, you know, want to take a second to point out that every single artist that worked on this book, I think they did such a phenomenal job. I mean, I think this is really a great time to be an X-Men fan in regards to the writing and in regards to the artwork too. And like I always say, you know, comic books, they're an interdisciplinary thing. It is all these people coming together to make something special. Everyone has their role and every role is important. You know, the letterers, the colorist, the inkers, the pencils, the writer, all of that. And everyone's really on their A-game here. And I think that's definitely something that we should appreciate. I also think this is just one of those books that kind of makes you take a step back and really appreciate comic books for what they are and what they can be because there's so much potential in them and I'm sure if you're somebody who reads comic books and you have people in your life who don't read comic books sometimes they're like oh I mean aren't those just like you know kind of picture books of people fighting and everyone's a superhero and they've all got powers and stuff like Krakoa and this current uh, era of X-Men and honestly even Claremont X-Men stuff they're, it's so thematically rich. There's so much going on. There's so much poignancy in it. There's so much being explored that it's so much more than that. I mean, it's a story, and stories can go in so many ways. We can go, you know, so many methodologies with our stories. And this is one that really, like, it's, it's good, guys. It's good. You got to check it out. So good. It makes me ramble. It makes me inarticulate. It makes me just excited about comic books. And I am. I am really excited about comic books. And I've got to say that's mostly in the, at least, you know, recent times since, you know, the start of uh, the pandemic. It's because X-Men, they really got me back into the thick of things. Just a lot, a lot, a lot of good stuff in here, guys. Like I said, Jonathan Hickman is really just killing it when it comes to these comic books and sort of, you know, like revolutionizing them in a way. And yeah, he's an awesome guy. And I think you'll notice uh, as I'm flipping through here, there's a lot of data pages too. And that's good because he's putting a lot of work into these. And every once in a while, he just needs to, you know, dump data on us. He needs to dump some infographics on us. Just needs to, you know, take a break from uh, the comic book artwork and just explain something to you in so much depth. Just explain something to you in a different mental way. And I think it's really funny. And it's something that I think is kind of endearing and cool about the run. And sometimes these manifest themselves in, like, emails. Like I said, sometimes they're charts. Sometimes they're, like, a character scribbles. And I think it's just a really cool way to add to you know the comic book storytelling but let me know if you enjoyed this run guys if you've read it and if not let me know if you're planning on picking this up uh like i said if you're you're not into the x-men at the moment read house of x powers of x and then read this and i think uh we might just make an x-men fan out of you yet but anyways guys that is the video i hope you enjoyed it please like comment and especially subscribe because i'm so close to 500 at this point and it'd be so cool and so special to get here um, because i appreciate you all i appreciate the community we have here and i think that's a great thing and have a great rest of your day